Okay, let's first install the cadmium drive. Warp cell. So this is the warp. The crimson core is your hyperdrive. So let's install the cadmium drive. I need one wiring loom. So we can buy that here. ships arrive. Alright, wiring loom, chromatic metal. Notice 644 when I install it, 676. Okay, let's go. Uh, I have 11,499,298 units and 8,276 nanites. Let's go recover another ship, or a couple. building on Bove, which we've already been on. So far it took us three tries the first time <clears throat> to get a crash ship. I don't really have to scan very much because I've already got all the animals on the planet. User identified, terminal now active. Unlocking data log for analysis. What are the sentinels? They appear on countless worlds without summons or warning. They traverse the galaxy unimposed and enforce their will upon every sentient being they encounter. Who made them? Who gave them the will to police the stars and demand that we bow to their silent rules? The goal of the experiment was to learn the answers to these questions. It began on an uncharted world beneath a blue-white sun far from the axis of civilization. The first drone screamed when it was cut open. And I discover something to aid me on my journey, some nanites.
on the other side. Returning user identified, terminal now active. Unlocking data log, continuation for analysis. Where do the Sentinels come from? No ships are ever seen arriving to deposit them. Yet we know they have spatial drives and can appear on any planet. Do they build themselves from resources on the worlds that they infest? Like a mechanoid virus drawing on the host body to metastasize new matter. Corvax science speaks of metals in their makeup that should not exist in our age of the universe. No one has ever seen them built. They are simply here, as if the universe expresses them into existence. And I discover something left uh, that will aid me, some nanites. All right, let's do it again. Signal booster. We've been on this planet, so we've discovered all the creatures. We've been on two planets in this system and discovered all the creatures on those two planets. Returning user identified, terminal now active, unlocking data log, continuation for analysis. There is a world, turned to dust long before the rise of the Viking, where the natives turned against the sentinels. They chafed under the omnipresent eyes of the machines. Resentment begat violence, drones were destroyed. More natives fought. And so came the bipeds, the quadrupeds, the interceptors in the sky, these and more. Soon there was war, and still the machines came, in exponential growth until at last they ended a species as a punishment. Still the galaxy refused to learn from this. And I discover something deep inside um, that will aid me, nanites. go. We got to drop pod.
I'll add this down here. Kinda makes me wish. Uh, kinda makes me wish I got an extra slot up in my tech on my exosuit there. Harling Liu's small body looks especially tiny against this vast, baking landscape. They seem downcast and fearful, as though they've been lost out in the heat for some time. They reach out towards me with trembling fingers and hope in their eyes. I offer directions, one navigation data. The Gek seizes the navigation data, examining the decrypted output with relief. Apparently their immediate dilemma is resolved, but they do not set off to leave. Gratefully they reward me, but then bury their face in their data pad. Perhaps they have other unfinished business here. Let's install what we just got, the uh, thermal protection module. Projectile ammunition. All right, bowcaster. Inside we go. The security alert is scrambling the screen. All that is visible is a chaotic jumble of alien words. This appears to be an AI-driven facility. If I were to reactivate the correct workflow, its autonomous systems may bring the installation back online. I don't know, create trade module. The terminal rejects the input. Oh, I should have done space station. I think it's a Corvax system, I don't know. The terminal rejects the input and shuts down entirely. A small red light flashes on the display, tracking my movement. I'm going in outer space and using another one of those. Ah! We got a spaceship style distress signal. That exclamation point often, but not always, often means a recoverable spaceship.
So roughly every three tries, we're getting a spaceship. Let's talk to the to the guy. Where is he? This geck appears to have been stranded. Their starship smoking and landlocked. They shrug. Wide-eyed and innocent, indicating the faulty navigation gimbal that drove them into the dirt. I offer assistance. Attendant Yickeldrat looks pleased. Their eyes shift pointedly between me and the craft. A cursory glance at the ship's battered components is revealing this ship has been poorly maintained, the various subsystems simply wearing out to the point of failure. Some parts look more than a decade old. All right, I'll perform deeper repair, one microprocessor. Any repairs to this starship won't last long without addressing the blown out navigation circuitry. I fit an expensive new microprocessor and patch up the surrounding components. Okay, now I talk to him. I try to press the importance of good starship upkeep to attendant Yickeldrat, but it seems they cannot or will not understand me. Nonetheless, they seem appreciative of my thorough repairs. They fish around for something to offer in trade and beam when they find something suitable. I wave farewell. Unstable plasma, like I really want that. Life form that works or worked in this installation left its equipment scanning the skies for interesting new systems and spatial phenomena. In its absence, it struck gold. A beacon has been received and a transmission sequence awaits response. 1212, 2121, 1212. I guess it must be 2121. We've done an ancient ruin, so let's let's go do the ancient ruin. I convulse as I reach out and touch the beautiful stone marker, my mind filling with a deadly knowledge of the true history of the Gek. We are the masters of galaxies, the overlords of the cosmos. Each foe will submit with bended knee to the almighty Gek Dominion. We are the first spawn. Look upon our works and despair. 
All right, I'll just seek help with the language. I'm not gonna do the other one. My knowledge of the Gek increases. in the outer space and try the maps again. And another distress signal. That could be a spaceship. And if you're curious, I'll do uh, the camera. The interior of the down craft is a patchwork of technologies, possibly scavenged from multiple ships. The portly corpse of a dead beak life form sprawls on the control panel. Clearly the deceased had a penchant for the finer things in life. The cargo hold is secured by some kind of homemade security system. Like the rest of the ship, it's a mishmash of technologies. Deactivating it could be tricky. Well, I attempt to open the cargo hold. Bypassing three layers of security, I open the cargo hold, only to be knocked down by a shockwave of energy. Scanning the enclosure, I see the pain is worth it. Phase beam.
unpin the formula. Launch thruster needs to be repaired and the pulse engine. Pulse engine is hermetic seal and metal plate. The launch thruster is pure ferrite and dihydrogen gel. Now the A-class shield, I'll store it. E to leave, and I'll go install that A-class shield in my starship. I'll also remove stuff from my inventory so I have more room when I um, recover the ship and, re and have it salvaged or, or wrecked. All right, so you see my shield is 251.7. Now it's 264.4. Voice of Madness, that's a decent name. Let's recover the ship. So it should be worth about 2.5 million. To the space station. Claim scrap worth two million two hundred and sixty five thousand units. The voice of madness is a nice name though. Alright, first we check the upgrades. C class upgrades, so let's turn those in for nanite. Sixty two and sixty nanites. Sell. All right, three hundred eighty four thousand for the spool of nano cable. One million eight hundred and seventy five thousand the subatomic regulator. So we have 13,837,703 units and 9,000, well, hold on. and 9,224 nanites. I think I'll end the episode here. Thank you for watching. We'll probably continue to salvage and wreck uh, scrap ships in the next episode.